I even do I wanna go in here. Hey guys, what's going on? Gassy Mexican here, and this is Message Monday for 422 2013. And we're just gonna go right back into it. I like how I say back into it as if as if you've already been listening and watching this video, or this is a continuation of some other, you know, Message Monday, but it's not. It's a it's a whole new entire thing, so that doesn't make sense. Anyways, not going on a tangent, going to our first question. First question for this week's Message Monday comes from Jay Meekins on Twitter, and they say, Did you teach yourself how to edit videos? If not, how did you learn? Um, good question, and I've never gotten this one before. That's why it was picked. <laughs> Sorry, there was a little bit of snot in that. I didn't mean for that to happen. Um, did I teach myself how to edit videos? Yes, mainly I taught myself how to edit videos. I don't know why I'm saying mainly. Well, I, I mean... If there was specific things that uh, I wanted to learn from people that I knew, you know, use... First of all, let me say, I use Sony Vegas Pro and I use um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Those are the two editing programs that I use, and both of them I pretty much taught myself how to learn or uh, how to use by myself. Um, if I had specific questions, I would reference, you know, some friends that I knew that already were familiar with the program, but pretty much, yeah, just... I'd, I'd look it up on YouTube myself, or most of what I learned as far as... Um, as far as editing, is just going into the program myself and just playing around with stuff and seeing what buttons do, seeing, you know, what what options and features the thing has. That's probably the best way to learn, you know, the basics and the fundamentals of a program, I feel like is, I mean, YouTube videos are great and stuff, but I like, um, I like personally just going in there and messing around with stuff and figuring out how things work myself. So that's pretty much what I did. Um, and then, you know, from then on is just like, if I had a specific thing that I was pretty sure the, the program uh, could do, I'd just look it up on YouTube or, you know, on the internet and find a tutorial for it. But yeah, everything I do um, for editing is, is uh, self-taught. It's not like the, the editing that I do is super complicated or anything like that. Obviously, some things are a little more complicated than others, but uh, for gameplay stuff like that, I mean, it doesn't really take a whole lot of a whole lot of skill to to edit it up. It's just kind of more tedious stuff to cut out, um, you know, in between times, like if I'm doing like a highlight video, I'll cut out stuff that's, you know, doesn't make it as funny or whatever. So, uh, hold on, I have to cough. All right, I cut out me coughing because it was really disgusting. Anyways, um, I'm back and thank you for your question, Jay Meekins, and let's move on to the next one. Next question is from Lo Lolo Row 2, Lolo Row 2, I think. Uh, and they said, would you eat poop or drink pee. Um, I'm gonna go with pee. I'm gonna say drink pee because it's, I don't know, it's got kind of more like a constant taste to it, I guess. Not that I would know. I don't, that, that sounded really weird. Like, you know, I drink pee on the regular and from what I found, it's pretty constant. No, it just seems like pee would be a lot less disgusting. Like poo, you're probably, you have to chew it and stuff like that. Like, you know, and then you have to worry about like the, the size of the poo. You know, and whose poo is it? Is it someone else's poo or is it your own poo? I guess it doesn't really make it any better if it's someone else's pee too, but I feel like that would be a quicker thing because if I wanted to, I could just, I could chug that down, you know what I mean? Not have to really experience it for very long, but if you're eating poo, that just seems like, you know, it could get in your teeth and stuff, the flavor could stay on your, your tongue. I just, I don't know. And, and I feel like you'd get, it'd be a more pungent, strong, disgusting kind of thing that'd probably make me puke. Not I'm, not, I'm not saying that drinking pee would, would be a pleasant experience, but I think out of those two, that's probably the least, um, the least, um, I don't know, uh, I don't know, unpleasant. So, probably pee. Um, you know, and if you're Bear Grylls, I mean, he, he drinks his pee all the time, so I mean, it's not that big of a deal. So, I just, I just think of Bear Grylls, I would, I would draw inspiration from him, and I would think of myself as a badass who could probably survive the wilderness if I was, uh, you know, in such a situation. So, I go with the P. Thank you for your question, and let's move on to the next one. Next question is from MLG Darman, and they say, Hey Max, what's the most exotic slash foreign place you've been to? Um, let me think here. Farting noises. Uh, I've been to Mexico, but I wouldn't really call it exotic. I mean, there are, there are cool places in Mexico, I guess. But the places that I went to weren't really exotic. They were kind of more just uh, kind of poverish sort of places because we had family and stuff that were there. And that's that's pretty typical. I mean, this is a lot of poor areas. And they're not even necessarily, I don't know, I don't, it's, it's difficult to call them poor, whatever. I mean, I guess they are, but like they're happy and stuff like that. It's a different kind of environment and lifestyle down there. People live a lot more simply than they do up here. But that was a long time ago that I've been there. So things might have changed in that area. But yeah, um, I've been to Mexico. 
I'd say the two places that are probably the most exotic or, or foreign that I've been to, I've been to St. Thomas. Um, that was really nice. I went scuba diving there. Um, and I've also been to Jamaica, or, or not Jamaica, sorry, the Bahamas. I've been to the Bahamas several times on a cruise with my parents and my brother and stuff. And that was pretty cool. Um, I've been to Puerto Rico too, um, and that was, that was, that was fun. It's cool. I didn't really get to see too much of it though. Um, just kind of, that was on a cruise ship as well. And, uh, we were there with other people too, that were on a cruise ship with us, like friends of the family. So we didn't really get to do all the things that we wanted to do or like, ch I was more interested in like checking out like the actual culture and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm, I'm, a, I'm interested a little bit in shops and like, you know, touristy stuff, <clears throat> but I like, I like doing things that not, not norm that you wouldn't normally do. Not normally do. I almost said that. Um, but yeah, those are the three places I've been to. I'd say that, that are most tropical or foreign. So yeah, that's where I've been. Um, I really want to go to, uh, it's not, I guess this would be more foreign, not tropical, but I really want to make it to Europe someplace. I don't really care where in Europe. Um, I'd also, I, I, I want to visit England. I want to go to England as well. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just want to be able to go into that side of the world and kind of compare and contrast how things are over there and how things are over here. And also go into pubs and stuff like that and, you know, just experience the pub scene and uh, try different beers and, and drinks and stuff and experience different culture and all that. I am interested in, in touristy stuff, too. But uh, in general, I just kind of like to compare and contrast how things are here and how things are over there. And, of course, meet you guys. If I do end up in that side of the, the world, or any place. Generally, as a rule of thumb, if I go to a place that I'm not usually at, I'll I'll try to do like a meetup or something like that. At least that's that's kind of gonna be my policy. I'm gonna try to do that. Sometimes, um, depending on what I'm doing, you know, I don't have enough time to do that type of thing. So, so um, but if I make it to the like, you know, if I end up in Europe or you know some place far from where I am. I'll definitely try to is my best to do a meetup or something like that so I can meet you guys that are that live in that place wherever I happen to be at that particular time. But thank you for your question and let's move on to the next one. Next question is from Mr. Lubes99 and they say, "Are you making any more Daisy videos and what game are you most excited for in this coming year?" Um yeah, I think it's safe to say that I probably will do Daisy videos. Um, some more, some new ones in the future. I've been considering or, or wanting to try to get Renee to try um, Daisy because uh, she's always been interested in zombie apocalypse and stuff like that, and just post-apocalyptic kind of deal. Um, so I want her to try it out. She's never really played the game. She's never really sat down and, and tried it herself. So I think that could be fun, as well as um, I, I heard from Nick recently today that there is a. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Hold on a second. I can find it by clicking. Through the power of clicking, I can figure it out. Oh, Daisy Breaking Point. That is, that is a, a new thing that's kind of come out, and it's uh, eliminated a lot of things. Such <coughs> a lot of. Sorry about that. But I have a tickle in my throat, and I was just fucking up this recording. Anyways, um, I'm actually gonna leave that cough in there. I, I don't feel like you know cutting my my speech up mid sentence. So, anyways, um, Daisy Breaking Point is what I was I was trying to say. Getting back on topic, that's uh, a new thing that's kind of come out. Um, and it helps it helps things in regards to streaming. It doesn't make it as easy to stream or to stream snipe for people to find you, you know, while you're streaming. That's the biggest thing and the, the hardest thing about streaming Daisy. Almost said Gazy. Um, that's that's a big problem. And also they've added in a whole bunch of other weapons and a bunch of other features. I kind of just glossed over the, the the readout for it, so I don't really know the specifics of what they've added. But it looks really cool. I saw someone streaming it earlier. So uh, I think me and Nick and maybe some other people are going to try that out. Um, if not, maybe I'll just try it out myself. So maybe that and also uh, try to maybe get Renee. Maybe, maybe. I'm saying maybe a lot. Um, try to get Renee to try out um, Daisy. So... I would say it's a good bet that, yes, I probably will make more Daisy videos in the future. Um, what am I most excited for in the coming year as far as games? I'm going to say at this point, obviously it's early in the year yet, but I'm going to say Grand Theft Auto V. That's probably my number one right now. Um, I've been, I, I was a huge fan and am still a huge fan of uh, GTA 4 and from the trailers and stuff and the things that I've been hearing about GTA 5 it looks incredible and it sounds like it's gonna be awesome so I hope I hope Rockstar just knocks it out of the park I think they're going to um, and I'm really excited for that that's probably my number one thing that I'm most excited for this year for games but thank you for your question and let's move on to the question that comes after this 
Second to last question comes in from Sergeant Time Monkey, and they say, "What are you looking forward to this to? Oh, sorry. Let me let's try that again. What are you looking forward to this year's? Am I reading this wrong? What are you looking forward to this year? Okay, they so they did word it weird because that was throwing me off. What are you looking forward to this year's E3? I, I guess that that's that's right. I was just reading it wrong. I don't know. What am I looking forward to for this year's E3? Um, for those of you guys that don't know, I haven't really announced it or whatever. Renee tweeted it out and I retweeted it, but I will be at E3. I don't know if any of you guys are going to be there because it's it's an event that's kind of closed off to the public. You have to get a badge, you know, and be somewhat associated with the industry. Um, the gaming industry, that is. But myself and Renee are going to be there, so um, we're going to be checking stuff out. But um, I've been there before, once before last year was my first year being there. This will be my second time going. Um, Renee has never been to E3, so I'm excited the fact that that's her first time going there. And it's actually really cool. Like, the first time that I went there last year, it was interesting actually being on the show floor when I've been so used to just seeing it, you know, on live streams and stuff like that. It seemed like... I'm burping, by the way. Um, it seemed like... Uh, it seemed like something that was kind of surreal or whatever. You're so used to seeing it just, you know, on TV and on uh, live streams online and stuff like that. And to be actually there, I actually attended um, a Nintendo conference there. So that was really cool seeing a, a live like press conference, you know, that you're normally, like I said, you, you kind of, it's kind of a surreal experience. Got to see Reggie play around with the Wii U and have like a, make ridiculous faces demonstrating how it like morphs your face and stuff like that. But anyways, it was really cool. Um, I don't think we're probably not going to have any, um, admission to any of the conferences, um, but that's still cool because obviously the show floor is cool enough. It has all the stuff that they announce and show there, um, sometimes earlier than you find out stuff um, earlier than what the, the press, the show floor or whatever the press things, press conferences release. So, um, but biggest thing that'll be there, uh, hopefully the PS4, uh, they'll have that there playable. I don't know if they will. Um, I haven't really done a whole lot of research on what's going to be there um, at, the sh at the event itself. Um, but I would imagine there's going to be some sort of PS4 presence there. So if they announce something there, usually that means they have it at the show. Um, maybe we'll actually get to see what it looks like and get a little hint or idea of what um, their, um, their release lineup for games will look like. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Thanks for your question, and let's move on to the final one. Last question for this week's Message Monday is from Trackin' Piggies, and they say, Are you going to play more Feed the Beast? Um... For those of you guys that don't know, uh, let me preface this uh, by saying, yes, I've played some Feed the Beast just recently on a live stream. Uh, I Am Spoon is, was showing me and Renee how to play it. And first of all, off the bat, let me say, that thing is crazy complicated. It's really cool, and I think it's nuts how a bunch of people coded in all these mods to work together in like this big kind of mega mod thing um, that they call Feed the Beast. But it's kind of over my head right now. I'm taking baby steps to learn it. And I, I do, I, I do have an interest into it. Um, some of you guys might have seen the highlight that I put up of of uh, us messing around with the portal guns that was in the in the Feed the Beast uh, mod pack dealy or whatever you want to call it. Um, that was really cool. But there's crazy other things that that uh, Spoon was I am Spoon was showing me, and um, I'm interested. I, I do want to learn it, and I think it's a really cool thing to stream because there's so much you can learn and do. So there's always you know it's not such it's not a thing where you're just standing around doing nothing. Um, I do want to learn more of it, but it just seems like it's going to take time. So yes, I probably will play more Feed the Beast. Probably going to do it more so live streams. Maybe record some stuff. I don't know. Maybe when I, me, me and Renee get kind of the hang of stuff, maybe we can uh, do like a series, or like a mini series or something like that and see how you guys like it uh, of Feed the Beast. But I'd only do that probably when we're more acclimated and, and uh, a little bit more used to the basics of Feed the Beast and how things work in that mod. So... Uh, good bet, I would say yes. Probably going to be doing some, some more Feed the Beast in the future. But that's going to do it for this week's Message Monday, guys. Thanks for your questions. Um, try to send in questions for next week. The way you do that is uh, wait till Monday. If you follow me on Twitter, that's the best way uh, to know when you can submit your questions. But follow me on Twitter sometime on Monday afternoon. I'll tweet out asking for questions. You tweet me, um, you tweet me back your questions using hashtag Message Monday or hashtag MM. Um, but only when I tweet, because if you tweet before then, I'm not going to use your question just because the reason why I, I, I wait for, I ask you guys to wait for when I ask for questions is it's much easier for me to just go through real quick. They're all grouped together and it's nice and easy for me to pick out questions. So try that. If, you're, if your question doesn't get on uh, Message Monday right away, try again. And if it just 
if it just keeps on not getting on, maybe it's a question I've already answered or it's just a question that I don't want to answer. So keep trying. Um, I pick randomly. I just just on just based on how good the question is or how interesting I think it is or, you know, if it just happens to strike me and, and jump out, I'll, I'll pick it. So that's going to do it, guys. Thank you to everybody again that sent in questions for this week. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And, um, you know, good fortune and all that. Anyways, um, goodbye and thanks for watching. Goodbye.